this is Story Recap. Today I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and sci-fi film called Battlefield Earth. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 3000 AD, civilizations have crumbled and mankind is an endangered species. The surviving humans live in small tribes scattered all over the world. From one of these tribes is Johnny Goodboy Tyler, who left to look for medicines but returns too late and misses his father's passing. Later, Johnny urges their chief to move somewhere with better food, but their chief refuses, fearing their god's punishment, similar to when they let demons fall from the sky. Johnny is a non-believer and decides to explore outside their village. Chrissy, his mate, expresses her desire to come with him, but she's the only one Johnny trusts to keep the village safe. In her frustration, she calls Johnny a greener, but she soon relents and bids him goodbye. In his journey, Johnny, not having seen any other man-made artifacts before, mistakes a dragon statue for one of the beasts and later walks past several other statues. Eventually, he meets Carlo and Rock, who initially approach to steal from him, but later learn that Johnny is a non-believer. So Johnny offers the meat and exchange for proof of the gods they speak of. They take Johnny to a city's ruins and show him statues and mannequins as proof of the gods punishing humans. Then, they later claim that the rest of the gods appear as lights in the night sky. That evening, they set up camp inside a deserted mall and share a meal over a fire. Johnny tells them about Chrissy and explains that a greener is someone who's looking for something better out there. Suddenly, they are attacked by aliens called Cyclos, and Carlo is the first to be hit by their weapons. Johnny and Rock try to escape, but they also get knocked out. When Johnny awakens, he finds himself in a cage with Carlo and other humans, being transported to the Cyclo's massive dome in Denver, Colorado. As soon as they enter, a Cyclo hands each of them a breathing device that allows them to breathe inside the Cyclo's controlled atmosphere. The humans look out in astonishment as they fly over ruined skyscrapers. When they land, Johnny and Carlo attempt to escape, but Cyclo guards quickly subdue them. Carlo gets to run a short distance before getting stunned by their weapons. And witnessing this, Johnny snatches a gun and fires at a wrangler. Johnny runs away but ends up in the clutches of the head of security, Turl, and his assistant, Kerr. They bring Johnny back outside and learn that Johnny killed the wrangler. Turl doubts it, so he gives Johnny a gun, unconvinced that he'd know how to use it. But Johnny fires again and kills another guard. Then, Turl and Kerr can't help but laugh. That evening at a pub, Turl revels in his upcoming return to his home planet after five cycles on Earth. The bartender has been his eager informant and asks Turl to keep his illegal activities off his file. However, Turl doesn't care what happens to him since he won't be needing information from him anymore. Meanwhile, the captured humans are hosed down, caged, and rounded up for slavery. The next day, District Manager Zeet arrives for a board meeting with Earthbound Cyclo officials, including the high-ranking planet ship. They discuss historical information they've gathered about Earth and the additional workers that planet ship has requested, and Zeet mentions Turl's upcoming transfer. Turl is excited, and Kerr is keen to take his place, but Zeet reveals that home office has decided to keep him on Earth for another 50 cycles. Apparently, Turl has offended a senator who then made sure he never gets back. Later, Turl gets drunk at the pub with Kerr, frustrated that he failed to secure a better position in the corporation. In the cages, green goo is rationed for humans to eat. One of the men, Floyd, claims superiority, but Johnny challenges him in a fight. Fueled by his desire to escape and free the others, Johnny wins, and instead of being the new leader, he dismantles the hierarchy by letting everyone eat at the same time. Meanwhile, Turl confronts Kerr about the gold deposits he has hidden to claim as his own, finding out about it using cameras to spy inside the offices. Kerr is sorry for being caught, and although the gold is worthless due to its location's toxicity to Cyclo Miners, Turl hits Kerr for his betrayal. In a meeting later, Turl attempts to convince Planet Ship to use enslaved humans in gold mining, citing free labor and profitability, but Planet Ship refuses. As Johnny and the rest of the humans are being escorted to the quarry, a tower falls, and Johnny gets to escape in the rubble. He is quickly stunned, but the Wranglers decide to toy with Johnny as punishment, sending him running inside their base without a breathing device. At one point, a human helps Johnny, angering the Wranglers even more. At the same time, Turl secretly plots to illegally mine as much gold using human miners to leave Earth for good. He records Kerr divulging their plans, making it appear like Kerr's planning to steal the gold from the corporation. Unfortunately, he plans to pin it on Kerr in case they get caught. 
Johnny ventures into underground tunnels until he gets to a place with breathable air. His success is short-lived though, as there are locked gates at the end of the tunnel. Before the Wranglers shoot him, Turl and Kerr arrive, and Turl decides that Johnny's tenacity makes him the perfect human to train for their illegal plot. To learn more about humans, Turl sends Johnny, Carlo, and Floyd out to the mountains with cameras hidden in their buttons. He theorizes that if the humans think they have escaped, they'll find their favorite food, and Turl will use that for leverage. However, the humans can't find anything except rats that they're forced to eat raw, leading Turl to believe that that's their favorite food. Johnny also discovers their button cameras and destroys them, prompting Turl to send Cyclos to take them back. The three keep moving until they reach a cliff. With nowhere else to go and the Cyclos at their heels, Johnny resolves to jump. But Turl arrives in a transporter and forces Johnny and the others to retreat until they're cornered and recaptured. Eventually, Johnny and a team of humans are set to work at Turl's office. Johnny meddles with their technology and gets caught, so he is taken to a separate room to be subjected to the Cyclo Learning Machine, a device used to force alien knowledge into humans through the eyes. After a while, Turl returns, and Johnny is surprised to understand the Cyclo language. Turl takes his shock as a sign that he hasn't learned enough, so he resumes the learning session. When the Cyclos leave, Carlo comes for Johnny, pulling him away from the machine. He tries to persuade Johnny to leave, but Johnny refuses, realizing that learning about the Cyclos is the key to their freedom. Johnny willingly sits back in the chair and continues learning more about their alien colonizers. That evening, Johnny tries to explain to the prisoners some complex mathematical equations by writing on the ground, but none of them gets it. Soon, Johnny leads the others back into the Cyclos' office, and using Johnny's new understanding of Cyclos, they get access to the weapons vault. Meanwhile, back in Johnny's village, the return of his horse convinces Chrissy to also venture out to try finding him. Johnny is taken back to the learning machine, and Turl gets impatient, thinking Johnny isn't learning anything at all. Turl throws Johnny around, but Johnny surprises him and Kerr when he talks to them in Cyclo, and orders them to get a transporter. On Johnny's cue, the others appear and aim the guns they've taken at Turl and Kerr. However, nothing happens when Johnny and the others pull the trigger, as Cyclos do not store loaded weapons. Turl hits him and grabs Mickey by the neck, forcing Johnny to bargain his participation in mining gold to spare Mickey's life. Turl threatens to kill Johnny and replace him with someone else instead. But Johnny knows Turl doesn't have time to go through all of it again. Johnny is subsequently taken to the ruins of Denver Library, in an attempt to show him how human civilizations fell because of their inferiority to the Cyclos. However, Johnny is fascinated by the Declaration of Independence, making him more driven to seek liberation. In another display of dominance, Turl takes the humans outside and shoots several grazing cows. Suddenly, a human tribe arrives, and its leader, Robert the Fox, tackles Turl to the ground. Johnny snatches the loaded gun and gets a chance to vaporize Turl at the urging of his fellow humans. Johnny doesn't shoot though, as he believes he can use Turl to fight the Cyclos and liberate humankind once and for all, and Robert pledges his and his men's allegiance to Johnny's cause. In a ruse, Johnny returns the gun to Turl, making him believe humans submit completely to the aliens. Turl takes Johnny away and reveals that they've captured Chrissy, identifying her as his mate because of a sketch of Johnny in her possessions. Chrissy is wearing a neck brace that could blow her head off, and Turl demonstrates by killing off Mickey's brother, Sammy. That evening, Johnny blames himself for Sammy's death, but Carlo and the others talk to him, acknowledging that he was right and that they share his vision to fight the Cyclos and gain true freedom. As a symbol of commitment, Johnny cuts a lock of his hair and offers it to Mickey. The rest of the humans learn of Johnny's ability to speak the alien's language, and that he He's planning to free them all, so they chant and cheer in solidarity. Eventually, Turtle meets up with a female alien, Chirk, who hands in Planet Ship's accounts in exchange for his promise of luxury once they return to their home planet. In those accounts, Turl learns that Planet Ship has been falsely reporting that operations have been running at a loss to keep all the extra credits for himself. Using this knowledge, Turl blackmails Planet Ship to sign blank order forms that ultimately transfers authority to Turl. With these orders, Turl acquires mining equipment and even makes it look like his plan to use human miners is Planet Ship's idea. Once Turl has all the equipment, he trains Johnny to fly a transporter using a simulator, all while threatening to kill Chrissy every time he fails. Johnny learns quickly, and soon, he's flown out to the mining site with the other humans. At the same time, the others are taught how to operate alien mining equipment. The Cyclos are unable to go to the exact location of the gold deposits, so the humans get there on their own and discover that they're expected to mine on a cliffside. Carlo expresses his concern about not meeting the required amount of gold in 14 days, but Johnny already has a plan. He's read about Fort Knox, 
a U.S. facility where mined gold is stored, and plans to present that to the Cyclos. Meanwhile, they'll use the time to gather supplies for their uprising. Johnny, Carlo, and Mickey travel to the ruins of the Library of Congress, and discover that when the Cyclos arrived, the aliens sent out flying gas drones to invade Earth. Their human ancestors only survived as they fled to remote radiated areas that had a lethal reaction to the Cyclos breathing gas. Mickey suggests permanently living in those areas for safety, but radiation was also poisonous for humans, so they all agree that the only way is to take back their planet, or the last of humanity becomes extinct. At Fort Knox, the three collect gold bars and eventually deliver half of them to Turl. Initially, Turl is suspicious since the gold is already in bars instead of the raw ore they usually mine, but when he scans them, Turl is satisfied and asks to have the rest of the gold in seven days. That evening, Johnny gathers everyone to go over their plans. Instead of fighting the aliens with primitive weapons, Johnny intends to stage a revolt inside the dome and get the Cyclos to come to the city. Then, they'll blow up the dome, destroying their controlled atmosphere. He assigns Carlo to blow up the dome, and once it's destroyed, Johnny expects more Cyclos to be teleported down there to round them up. To avoid this, Johnny plans to detonate radiation bombs on the alien's home planet, deducing that the radiation will react to their atmosphere and destroy the entire planet. Eventually, the humans travel to Fort Hood, Texas, and gather all the weapons their ancestors have left in storage. Johnny finds a flight simulator and sends Robert inside to learn how to operate fighter jets. Once Robert gets the hang of it, the rest of his men are also taught how to fly. Mickey finds a nuclear firebomb, and as Johnny carefully takes it out, he reveals his intention to be teleported to planet Cyclo and detonate it. Realizing Johnny will be sacrificing himself, Mickey volunteers to do it instead to ensure Johnny can keep leading the revolt. Meanwhile, Turl begins stacking the gold bars on alien body freezers in preparation for his escape to his planet. One evening, Johnny convinces Kerr that Turl will betray him once he leaves with all the gold, and offers him the discs of incriminating recordings in exchange for everyone's release. Kerr accepts, and Johnny gets to free Chrissy, taking her neck brace off. In the office, Turl arrives as Kerr watches the recordings. Kerr attempts to blackmail Turl into giving him more shares of the gold, and says that he has copies of the recordings given to someone else for safekeeping. Initially, Turl appears to have been outsmarted for the first time. However, he reveals that he's already known Kerr's plot, and pulls out the bartender's decapitated head. Turl blows off Kerr's hand and orders him to get all his gold into the teleporter in two hours. Meanwhile, Cyclo guards finally notice that the humans have escaped their cages, and while the others load up weapons and Carlo prepares the explosives, Johnny and another man fight the guards that have spotted them. The shots they fire trigger the alarm, and more guards arrive to round them up. As Johnny runs to get to the teleporter control room, the guards continuously fire at him. The others also begin to rampage all over the city, breaking everything in their path to distract the aliens. Johnny is cornered and exchanges fire with the guards, while Carlo waits for his signal to blow off the dome, and Mickey waits to be teleported. Carlo is pursued by a transporter, but he retaliates and blows it up with a missile. More transporters arrive, and Carlo seems to be done for, but Robert arrives with his men and fighter jets and defeats the other transporters. As humans and cyclos clash in a riot on the ground, transporters and fighter jets battle in the air. Robert chases a transporter but loses two of his men as he runs out of ammunition. So as a last resort, he ejects and crashes the jet into the enemy. Johnny takes Mickey and the nuclear bomb to the teleporter and returns to the control room. As the device boots up, Carlo radios Johnny for the signal again as the guards start dismantling his explosives. The teleporter boots up, and Johnny gives Carlo the signal, but Turl arrives and interrupts Mickey's transmission. Carlo blows up the dome, and the glass cracks, but it isn't enough to shatter the whole thing. Turl strangles Johnny and orders the Cyclos to exterminate all humans on sight, sending everyone on the ground in an all-out battle. Carlo attempts to crash his transporter and break the dome, but he gets stuck instead. He notices the stock of explosives surrounding him, so, in a heroic sacrifice, he sets his missiles on the stocks and causes an explosion that finally sends a dome crashing down. Glass and steel rain down, and humans rush to get underground while Cyclos fall due to the loss of their breathable atmosphere. In seconds, the Cyclos dome crumbles to the ground. Turl resumes the teleporter transmission, and orders to initiate the gas drone extermination sequence. As the gas drones are preparing to deploy, Johnny manages to stab Turl and secretly attach the neck brace to his arm. Johnny then pretends to plead for Chrissy's life, prompting Turl to press the button, and his arm is blown off. At the same time, Mickey is transported to planet Cyclos 
glow, where he immediately detonates the nuclear bomb, instantly decimating the entire planet. By morning, the remaining humans are finally free, and Robert and Johnny remember their fallen comrades. Chrissy also finds Johnny, and they tightly embrace each other. At Fort Knox, Johnny holds Turl captive to leverage him against other cyclo colonies that might threaten Earth again. Turl thinks the humans have overlooked that Kerr is still around, but Kerr reveals that in exchange for knowledge of cyclo technology, the humans have made him head cyclo. Turl is left in his cage, surrounded by all the gold he has tried to steal. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.